So the coffee market is in a really interesting position because um, uh, I've noticed that lately, as of um, the past um, couple of years, I've noticed the market has been a lot more run by speculators and not just the natural things that affect coffee up or down. Um, you, when I talk about natural things, I talk about things like drought, things like um, um, farmers that go on strike or truckers that go on strike or um, too much rain, too little rain, um, uh, insect damage can wipe out a, a whole crop and a whole harvest. Those sorts of things are natural variables that affect um, the output of coffee. Because coffee is traded on the commodities market, it's based on global supply and demand for the most part. And that changes every day depending on, again, all those natural variables as well as um, the fact that we are consuming a lot more coffee today than we've ever consumed. So if you think about it, um, supply and demand really runs the show. But we have this added element of speculators, which is very much exactly what happens in oil. Um, speculators can help, can drive up that for no, no real very, very good reason at all. Um, I'd say right now it's, um, uh, the majority of it comes from Central and Latin America. Um, but we, we're, we're roasting coffee from Central and Latin America, Africa, and Indonesia, which are the three growing regions. New Orleans is the largest port for coffee. Yeah, historically it's been the largest port. Um, they previously housed the, the New Orleans had a coffee museum there, which uh, I understand got devastated in Hurricane Katrina. Um, but uh, New Orleans is the primary port for coffee to come in. Because again, but the majority of this coffee is coming in from Central and Latin America. It takes about three or four months for the coffee to get here from, from origin and then to make it through the customs process to get to us. So um, then from there, we bring it into the roastery. Um, uh, we uh, then um, start roasting it as soon as we get it. The green beans come in on pallets. Uh, after the pallets, they're, um, they're pulled off. We roast uh, a bag at a time, which is about 120 pounds at a time. The bag is dumped into a bucket elevator which takes the beans up to the top, up to a top hopper. Once the roaster identifies that the drum inside, the air inside that drum is at, at the proper temperature, he will um, release those beans into the drum. Now we use a dual wall cast iron drum from the 1960s. It's a German roaster called a Probot. And this roaster is amazing for producing really nice even heat uh, throughout the whole process. It takes about 11 to 13 minutes. And um, after 11 to 13 minutes, those beans, uh, the, the roaster determines that that bean is at its precise roast for that particular coffee, um, which he does by sight, smell, and sound. Uh, once he identifies that it's at its proper temperature, he will open up the front door, which will launch the beans into what we call a cooling tray. And the cooling tray uh, uses a fan that pulls air down and as it pulls air down, it's also stirring the coffee at the same time. And what that does is it allows those beans to cool to room temperature in about four or five minutes. The cooling tray actually plays a really important role in the roasting process because you have a hundred, right now you probably have a hundred pounds of beans because you've lost 20 pounds due to moisture loss. So you've got about a hundred pounds of beans that all have been soaking up heat for you know, 11, 12 minutes. And so when you dump them out, it's really important that you slow down that cooking process as fast as possible or those sugars will burn. Sugars are very volatile. And so that's what we're dealing with when we're roasting coffee. We're dealing with a lot of sugars. So it's really important that they slow that down as fast as possible. The cooling tray does that. And then uh, from there it gets um, packaged up and um, we hand bag and hand package all of our coffees that go out, whether it's the one pound bag that you would find at uh, your local Whole Foods, um, or it's the five pound bag that a coffee shop gets. It's all hand weighed and hand bagged, hand sealed and boxed and sent out via FedEx. Or we also deliver here locally around Atlanta. And I host a lot of events. Um, I just hosted a, a, a great Ethiopian coffee and culture night, which was a month ago. It raised money for a really good cause, uh, Action for Words, which helps provide textbooks and build schools, classrooms in Ethiopia. We do other events like the Miracle Berry flavor tripping parties, which we're doing with Scout Mob. And then we also do um, events with um, our other partners like Cacao Atlanta, 
we're doing a single origin chocolate and coffee tasting where people can taste coffees from one specific region or one specific country. They can taste chocolate and cacao from one specific area and note the differences between them. So a lot of that stuff and then a lot of just general coffee education. Um, in the past year I've hosted um, 700 coffee 101s for 700 people and um, basically I just brought people in and led people through the process of what coffee is, where does it come from, how is it processed, how does that affect the flavors, um, all those sorts of things, how is it roasted, and then we actually sat down and tried all the coffees from the different regions so they could identify which one is which. So we do a lot of good coffee education out here as well. One thing that, um, one thing that separates us, one thing that, that separates Battle from Bronson from a from some of our competition is that um, we are one of the most sustainable coffee roasters in the world and we roast with 100% renewable energy and recycle about 80 to 85 percent of everything that comes in the doors gets recycled back out. Um, we use a lot of solar energy at our uh, roastery in Olympia and um, we're, we get awards um, every year from uh, environmental groups for our sustainability which is something that's really important to us. We also feel that sustainability doesn't just involve how we take care of the earth, but involves how we take care of the people along the way. So we make sure that we take care of the farmers. We make sure that the farmers get a fair wage and that they're very well taken care of, that they have the things that they need health-wise. We also partner with a couple of really good organizations, uh, Coffee Kids and Grounds for Health which are two really good organizations that target coffee families of, of farmers, pickers, producers, those sorts of things. So we're very active in that stuff as a roastery. That's part of our model of sustainability.